Hi. In this session, we're going to be talking about simple and compound time, which is one of the big topics for grade three theory. And don't worry if it doesn't make any sense at the moment. Hopefully it soon will. But basically there are two different kinds of time, one of which is called simple and the other is called compound. Here's an example of a piece of music in simple time. And here's an example of a piece of music in compound time. You might just hear from those two short examples that in simple time things have maybe a little bit more of a march feeling when there are four beats in a bar. When there are three beats in a bar it might feel a little bit more kind of waltzy. But when you hear that example in compound time can you hear there's more of a sort of lilt to the rhythm and that's why some composers prefer to write in compound time. Anyway, let's see if we can unpack this topic a little bit and begin to understand what's going on. And I'm going to draw a little table just to help us with this. And on the left hand side, we're going to have some examples of simple time. And on the right hand side, we're going to have parallel examples in compound time. OK, let's start with a time signature that we've already met in the sessions we've been doing for grades one and two. Here's a time signature, two, four. Remember the upper number tells us how many of something there are in the bar, and the lower number tells us what kind of beats we're dealing with. So two means there are two beats in a bar, four at the bottom means that those beats are crotchet beats. So two four means there are two crotchet beats in a bar. So in other words, I would have those two beats. And this is called a duple time. And the reason it's called duple is simply because there are two beats in a bar. Whenever you have two beats in a bar, it's a duple time. So you might be able to think of other examples of simple duple time. Because basically all it means is it's any time signature that has two at the top. So here's another example. Two, two. Now two, two means that there are two minim beats in a bar. So the lower numbers change because here I have crotchet beats and here I have minim beats but the upper number is the same. It's two, two crotchet beats, two minim beats. So they're both simple times with two beats and a bar. I could theoretically have something like two, eight. It's not a very common time signature, I have to say, but two, eight would be telling me that there are two quaver beats in a bar. I could even have 216, which may seem slightly crazy, but that would mean that there are two semi quaver beats in a bar. And as you can imagine, that's far less likely. So you're much more likely to meet 24 or 22 than you are to meet something like 28 or 216. But they're all theoretical possibilities at least. Now I'm going to sort of rule off there. And then I'm going to think about triple time. Because if duple means that there are two beats in a bar, then triple must mean that there are three beats in a bar. Now all I need to do is to think about these kind of time signatures again and work out what it would mean to convert them into simple triple time. So instead of two four, 
I would have three for three crotchet beats in a bar. Instead of two two, I would have three two, three minim beats in a bar. Instead of two eight, I would have three eight. And I must say three eight is much more common than two eight. So in three eight, I would have three quaver beats in a bar. And 216, I can't think when I last saw that, but I have on occasion seen 316, and that would be three semi-quaver beats in a bar. So hopefully you're beginning to see why these are all examples of simple triple time, while these are all examples of simple duple time. Let's go one step further and that's all we need to do on this side of the board. So if that's duple, that's triple, this must be quadruple. And you've probably already worked it out that if it's quadruple, there must be four beats in a bar. So let's see if we can now convert these time signatures into simple quadruple time signatures. So how about 4-4, four, four, where we're going to have four crotchet beats in a bar. How about 4-2, where we're going to have four minim beats in a bar. How about 4-8, where we could have four quaver beats in a bar. And how about 4-16, where we could have four semi-quaver beats in a bar. So they're all the likely possibilities in simple time. Simple duple times, anything with two at the top. Simple triple times, anything with three at the top. Simple quadruple times, anything with four at the top. So simple time is really what it says on the tin. It's pretty simple. If it says two, there are two beats. If it says three, there are three beats. And if it says four, there are four beats. So you're probably already beginning to suspect that compound time is a little bit more complicated. And you're absolutely right, but we will soon have it rumbled. I'm going to give you an example of the most common compound duple time. And the most common example of this is 6-8. Now, you're probably beginning to think, how on earth does six become a duple time? I'll come back to that in just a moment, but bear with me for now. Six, eight, let's start by seeing what it says on the tin. It says there are six somethings in the bar and that those somethings are quavers. So we're looking for six quavers. One, two, three, four, Five, six. Now this is where we have to go one step further because if I had a piece of music that had six quaver beats in the bar, it might sound a little bit manic, something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a bit crazy, isn't it, really? And it doesn't really sound terribly musical. So when we're in compound time, we organise things slightly differently. So we start by saying 6-8 is telling me that there are six quavers in the bar. Then we say we're going to organise those six quavers into two groups of three. Organise them into two groups of three. Okay, let's just do that. 
So here come the six quavers again. And this time, there's the first group of three quavers. And there's the second group of three quavers. And you can immediately see that we've got two groups of three quavers. Because two threes are six. Then we say, what's the total value of each group? Well, if there are three quavers in each group, then that's half plus a half plus a half equals one and a half. Do we have a note that's worth one and a half? Yes, we do. It's the dotted crotchet. So in 6-8, we have six quavers. We organise them into groups of three, so we end up with two groups of three quavers each. And then we say, what's the total value of each of those groups? And here's the total value. It's a dotted crotchet. So we end up with two dotted crotchet beats. Now hopefully you're now beginning to realise how 6-8 can be a compound duple time. It's duple because we end up with two beats, two dotted crotchet beats. Now let me give you another example of a compound duple time. Let's take 6-4. Now again, remember, what we do is we start with what it says on the tin. And what it says on the tin is that there are six crotchet beats in each bar. So let's just plot six crotchets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, of course, crotchets don't beam together in the way that quavers beam together. So we just have to imagine two groups of three. So say we think, okay, there's one group of three, there's the other group of three. That gives us our two groups of three, because remember that's what you do in a compound duple time. You say, I've got six of something, let's divide those six things into two lots of three. So here's one group of three crotchets, and here's a second group of three crotchets. Then I've got to say, what's the total value of each group of three crotchets? Well, three notes that are worth one beat each are going to be the equivalent of three. So do we know a note that's worth three beats? We do. It's the dotted minim. So do you see how again we end up with two beats. So in 6-8 we have six quavers, divide them into two groups of three, and the total value of each group of three gives us two dotted crotchet beats. In 6-4 we start by plotting six crotchets, we divide them into two groups of three in just the same way, and we say each group of three is worth one dotted minim. So in 6-4 I have two dotted minim beats. And you can see now why anything with six at the top is going to be an example of a compound duple time. Now remember where we started. I, I did gave you a sort of example of a piece of music in 6-8 where we were feeling six quaver beats in every bar, and it was a bit crazy, wasn't it? But if we start to feel two dotted crotchet beats in every bar, but we're still delivering those six quavers, it suddenly sounds rather different. One, two, one, two, one, two. And that's what gives it that slightly kind of lilting quality. So that's how compound duple time works. Now I wonder from there if you can work out how we would get to compound triple time. Because remember when we've got triple time, we're looking for three beats. So if six eight is six quavers, giving us two dotted crotchet beats, I wonder what we'd need 
to have the same kind of time signature, but in compound triple time. Well, I won't keep you in suspense for a moment longer, because the equivalent is 9-8. Let's have a little think about 9-8. What does 9-8 say on the tin? It says there are nine quavers in a bar. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's group them together, because that's our first group of three. Four, five, six. Let's beam those together, because that's our second group of three. Seven, eight, nine. And let's beam those together for the third group of three. And immediately you can see why this is a compound triple. There are nine quavers. I've organised them into groups of three. And I now have three groups of three. We realised in 6-8 that every group of three quavers gives us a dotted crotchet beat. So here we've got one dotted crotchet beat for the first three, another dotted crotchet beat for the second three, and another dotted crotchet beat for the third three. So 9-8 is an example of a compound triple time. And I'm sure you can see straight away how we would convert 6-4 into a compound triple time by making it 9-4. 9-8 is much more common than 9-4, but there are pieces of music written in 9-4. And that would give us 9 crotches. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Seven, eight, nine. Seems like quite a long bar, doesn't it? But when we put them into groups of three, it suddenly becomes a bit more manageable because now we're going to end up with three beats. Remember we said back here in 6-4 that every group of three crotchets is worth one dotted minimum. So the same will be true here. Three crotchets, one dotted minimum beat. Three crotchets, there's the second dotted minimum beat. And three crotchets, there's the third dotted minimum beat. So again, we end up with three beats in a bar. 9-4 is an example of a compound triple. And remember, we're working in groups of three. Two threes are six. Three threes are nine. So what about quadruple? Well, if two threes are six and three threes are nine, then four threes must be 12. So here we go, 12, eight. What does 12, eight mean? It means there are 12 quavers in the bar. Because we're in compound time, we're going to organize them in groups of three. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So if you thought a bar of nine was long, a bar of twelve was even longer. But here we are with our groups of three. We've got four groups of three, haven't we, to give us the twelve quavers. And we're still going to have the dotted crotchet beat that we had in six, eight and in nine, eight, because the eight hasn't changed at the bottom. And remember, compound time says organize things into groups of three. So the first group of three gives me a dotted crotchet. So does the second group of three. So does the third group of three. So does the fourth group of three. So 12-8 is a good example of a compound quadruple time. I could theoretically have 12-4. That's a pretty rare time signature, but there we are. Let's just think about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's get them into groups of three. There's one group of three, second group of three, third group of three and the fourth group of three, and each of these groups gives us one dotted minim beat. 
And so there's another example of a compound quadruple time. Now you might notice one or two things as we've been kind of unfolding this table. You might notice, for example, that in simple time, all the beats are not dotted. And you might notice that in compound time, all the beats are dotted. So that's a useful clue. If you're not quite sure what a time signature is, and you're asked, for example, to look at a piece of music and say what the time signature is, you might just look at how the notes are beamed together. Because if they look as if they're in groups of three, it's probably telling you that you're in compound time. But if it's in groups of two or maybe groups of four, it's more likely to throw up a beat that's not dotted. So it's probably going to be on the simple side. And of course, it's quite easy once you've understood that, just to remember that simple times have two, three, or four at the top. And compound times have six, nine, or 12 at the top. Now, you might be asked, as I say, to look at a rhythm and to say what you think the time signature is. So bearing this table in mind, let's see if we could work out what some time signatures might be in relation to particular rhythms. Okay, so here is a short rhythm. Now let's have a look at that and see if we can work out how many beats there are in a bar. Well, one and a half plus a half plus one, it looks as if it's throwing up three crotchet beats, doesn't it? One, two, three, 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 one, two,
and it's really organised into three dotted crotchet beats. So you can begin to see how you could look at a piece of music and identify the time signature by doing what we've just done in relation to your knowledge of that simple and compound time signature table. So I hope that gets you started on dealing with simple and compound time.